One of the more famous expressions that comes out of the Sermon on the Mount is one that you will have heard of before. Do not throw your pearls before swine. Now, that doesn't sound like Jesus very much, does it? Is he really saying that you have wonderful pearls and some people are swine and don't waste your time on them? No. No, he's actually saying something much deeper and richer and incredibly helpful for our relationships. That's what we're going to look at today. We're walking through the greatest teaching, the most influential words ever spoken to the human race by the most impactful teacher, Jesus of Nazareth, who ever lived. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, again, you want to remember the context. Very interesting when we get to this passage. There are a number of folks, way smarter than me, quite brilliant commentators, I won't name, who, when it comes to the saying we're looking at today, uh, their interpretation of it is, well, Jesus said it somewhere along the line. Matthew didn't know where else to put it, so he just wedged it in here. And I don't think that's what happened. I don't think, I, I think we ought to assume that Jesus had a reason for why he said what he said when he said it. And that Matthew, while he was certainly the editor, the writer of this gospel, was also a pretty bright guy and had reasons for ordering things the way that he did. So we have seen how in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about the offer of the blessed life. What's real is God and his kingdom. And the blessed life is one that's immersed in his love. And then the good person is somebody who's good from the inside. And he walks through, what does that actually look like? And that's part of what we're looking at here. Beginning with chapter 7, he says, Don't judge, lest you be judged. And the idea there is none of us know the full truth about anybody else. We're not in a position to judge. And to judge means to condemn, to criticize. We try to control other people by doing this. We're relating to them in a wrong way. We're going to get soon to how do you relate to people in the right way in the kingdom. And it's one word. And it's a great word. But um, condemnation engineering doesn't work. And it's precisely in that flow that Jesus says, do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. So to say that what Jesus is teaching here is some people are kind of like dogs, they're kind of like pigs, and you have these great pearls. And it's so opposite of what he's been saying. His whole point has been, don't relate to people this way. Don't judge them. Don't uh, go around like you are the great critiquer. Don't use criticism in order to manipulate people, try to control them. Um, uh, Recognize your own fallibility. Part of why he says, with the measure that you judge, you will be judged, is if I'm judging other people, if I'm condemning you, if I'm treating you with contempt to try to manipulate you, I myself am guilty. I will be judged by moral reality. It's just simply the way that things are. And then when we come here, the issue, and Dallas Willard, I got to say, writes, I think just brilliantly about this in his book, Divine Conspiracy. The issue here is not worthiness. There's some people that are just not worthy of the wonderful things you have to say. The issue is helpfulness. When it comes to a pig, the problem with a pearl isn't that the pig isn't worthy of the pearl. The pearl doesn't help the pig. A pig wants food. If you come to a pig, they want you to feed them. And if you give them a pearl, what's a pig going to do with a pearl? He's going to eat it. There is no pig that can handle a pearl in any other way. Maybe Arnold Ziffel from Green Acres, if you ever saw the old TV show, The Heir of the Bernbacher Estate, estate, he might know, but I digress. But uh, other than that, when it comes to pigs, you want to try to help them. And what Jesus is talking about is exactly in line with condemnation, engineering, and judging, and trying to take the little speck out of somebody else's eye when you get a plank in yours. Uh, I'm distorted about how much goodness I have, how much, how smart I am, and I can see your problem, and I'm going to fix you. So I will give you my pearl, whether you want it or not. The problem that Jesus is talking about here is we push our pearl, and you got to put pearl in quotation marks. We push our pearls of wisdom on other people, whether they want them or not. So this is not about the unworthiness of certain people. Uh, One of the books that I read talked about a group of children who were quoted as saying, no, cast your pearls before swine and ask, what does it mean? And one little boy said, it means I should never share my toys with my sister. 
That's not the kind of thing that Jesus would talk about. Uh, the idea is, now, don't use unwanted advice, um, wisdom that you think would be so great, where it, you're assuming in a spirit of superiority, I know what your problem is and I can fix you, and the other person doesn't want it. We see this especially with parents. I have known a parent who would have a kid in the room and everything about that child, their face, their body language, their silence, their tone of voice is saying, please let me out of here. This is just painful for me. And the parent doesn't even pay any attention at all. I got another pearl for you, but I don't want another pearl. I got a bag full of pearls and you're gonna get them till all my pearls have been handed over to you because I've, so, I've got so much wisdom, I can fix you. And then don't give your dog what is holy. That's the same issue. Years ago, when Baxter was quite young and chewing everything up, we got a nativity scene, and there was all these little wood figures, and we had it out, and Baxter couldn't leave it alone. He ate one of the shepherds, uh, he ate part of a wise man, and then he started in on the manger of baby Jesus, and was like, this is too far, Baxter, you cannot eat Jesus. Don't give your dog what is holy. The idea here is... Uh, not there are some people who are not worthy of your being good to them jesus has just said in the sermon of the mount love your enemies be like god who sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous and causes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust we're to be that same way he's not saying there's some people who are not worth your love or your wisdom it's don't be a pearl pusher don't uh don't violate other people's kingdom. See, this gets deeply into the fact that we all have a kingdom and we're learning how to operate in the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom, we don't go around using condemnation engineering and pushing uh, unwanted advice out of a posture of superiority into other people's lives. We honor their kingdom. So, for today, if you want to apply this teaching, observe the law of supply and demand in your relationships with other people. And the idea is this. Do not allow the supply of wisdom that you're offering to exceed the demand for your wisdom that they're asking for. And this happens all the time. At work, uh, maybe somebody who reports to me comes with an idea for something, and then I think, oh, and I can improve that idea. Why don't you also add this to it? And then instead of cheering on their kingdom and their initiative, uh, I end up getting in the way of it. And of course, this happens all the time in churches and spiritual situations. The Pharisees and the scribes uh, were enormous pearl pushers. Jesus said they added uh, heavy burdens on people's backs and do not lift a finger to help them. So, uh, today, as you walk through this day with people in your family, with your friends, with people that you work with, be aware of the law of supply and demand. When you're with somebody, be a student of them and their little kingdom as it's expressed in their body, in their faces, in their body language, and their tone of voice. And if somebody wants help, if somebody needs wisdom and they're asking for your help, by all means, pray and then offer it. And of course, there are certainly times when I got to say something to somebody else they don't want to hear. But when I do, it is to be motivated by love and offered with as good discernment and judgment as I'm able to give and not this unthinking knee-jerk superior, let me tell you what's wrong with you and how to fix it. Instead, in the kingdom, I'm always studying the person that I love. There is a law of supply and demand in human relationships that comes from the heart. Watch that one today. Make it a golden rule day. Don't be a pearl pusher. Don't be a holy object thrower. Make it a golden rule day enjoyed that teaching, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes in this series, Insurmountable, which is all about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. You can also head over to our website, becomenew.com, where we have over 700 10-minute teachings, all dedicated to helping you grow spiritually one day at a time. 
My name's Tim, and I'm a part of the team here at Become New. Hey yo. Just want you to know this is so much more than a YouTube channel. It's really a community of people who are brought together not by our strengths or our ability to achieve, but by our weaknesses and our need for help from God. So we're glad that you're here. If you have a prayer request, there's a group of us who meet each weekday, Monday through Friday, to pray for viewers just like you. So you can send us your request to the number 855-888-0444. We'd love to pray for you. We're glad that you're here. We'll catch you next time.